This morning, Kevin is going to encounter a lot of frustration in trying to deliver this load and finding an empty. Welcome to the not so joy of trucking. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Heidi Bun. <laughs> Good morning, Kevin. What time is it? 20 after 5 a.m. in Michigan. And why are we on the road so early? Even for us, it's a tad early. Because the delivery deadline for this load was midnight to 6 a.m. So we slept 15 miles away. We're gonna get there at like 20 to 6. What do we have? Kitty litter. <laughs> Tidy cats. Super absorbent. <laughs> All right, well, we're in, uh, heading into Lansing, Michigan. It is the capital of Michigan. We read an interesting little blurb on the Capitol building yesterday, the architect actually kind of started the trend of making state capitals look like the Capitol building from Washington, D.C. And I think it was constructed 1872 to 1878, something like that. Yes. And it looks quite beautiful in the picture. They have a lot of fancy interior design and including they used pine lumber and then painted it to look like delivery. We are bringing it from uh, just south of Chester, Virginia. So glad to finish it up. How many miles will it be in total? Uh, 700. Yeah. Oh, and if you like traveling with us, please do hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I'm just not a morning person. No. That's, the, that's a tough one. Earlier is worse, sir. <laughs> and no coffee this morning. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But the bed is comfy, and last night was nice because we were able to keep the windows open. It was cool enough. I'm actually going down to 57 on the outside, which meant about uh, 75 in here at its lowest. But it was, it was pleasant to have the Opti Idol off have the temperature consistent the night before it was blanket on blanket off sheet on sheet off up, up the idle on fan on off oh my god it was it was something this night was just glorious it was too short but it was glorious anyway let's go deliver kitty litter in one half mile turn right and arrive at destination and there's our destination right there Maya, Maya, how are you saying it? Maya, Maya, Maya. And you've been to one of these before. It's a distribution center. Yeah. Just in general, or for Walmart? Oh, What's the story? I don't know. Oh, you need your morning stretch? Big oh, yawn, big stretch. Tight. Ah, the maybe 520 is a little challenging for you too these days, huh? I just need some yoga. Okay. Yogurt? What? You need some yogurt? Oh. Oh. Ah. Hey, you should do downward facing dog, upward facing dog. Balance out on that kitty litter. <laughs> Okay. Lots of cars. Yep, they're open for business. Everybody's ready. Oh, Is look at they have storage. Yeah. Oh. Must be. Look at all their trucks. Turn right at Central Circle. Food on the food graphics. Yeah, interesting. Got up. Maybe it's a grocery store chain here. Hmm. Oh, look, they're watering their lawn. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. Free, free truck wash! <laughs> it's drive by again. Woohoo! <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Arriving at destination 20 seconds. 
straight ahead. That's the case. Yeah. Supposed to be truck straight down. ahead. So, <laughs> sometimes it surprises me the things that we are not familiar with because we lived in the Virgin Islands for so long, I would think. Apparently, this is a very large grocery chain. They have 253 stores. Half of them are in Michigan. The headquarters is in Walker, Michigan, which is part of the Grand Rapids metropolitan area. And the other one's kind of in the mid, you know, other Midwestern states. And what else can I tell you? I just looked it up on Wikipedia. It's, yeah pretty impressive actually uh, founded in 1934 and in 1962 they are credited with pioneering the concept of a super center so you can buy all sorts of things there not just groceries um, and well and kitty litter we know that uh, and the other interesting thing is that it's actually ranked I think it said 13th largest privately owned company in the US and then on the Forbes 500, it ranks really high up too. Um, so look it up if you're interested. Uh, you might already know about it. <laughs> We're still sometimes learning things, very interesting. Hey, here comes Kevin. Uh, unhappy Kevin. Oh no, very unhappy. Another one of those places with a kiosk, a little, a little console where you have to enter all kinds of information and then scan the bills and then Put in your cell phone number so then they can contact you. Like, are you gonna use my cell phone to do your business? Why aren't you paying for my cell phone service then, you know? Oh, one of Kevin's pet peeves. Yeah. Uh-oh, okay, gotta and close now, my door. Wait, he's, what now else? I'm in your computer system, so you're gonna sell my information to somebody who's gonna send me text messages day and night. Oh, has that much. actually happened? That hasn't actually happened. Well, I, get, I get junk like that all the time. Who knows if it's from one of these places or not? Ooh, right? Hey, is that driver facilities? <laughs> Little outhouse there? <laughs> the last time I did one of those kiosks, 
Yes. It was like, oh, it's new. We're having trouble. Yeah. It took me half an hour to line up the trucks at that gate. Was half a mile long because it's just nobody understood the system and it was a weekend there was nobody there to get it working right and the guard didn't know how to bypass it and just do everything by hand and, oh my god actually when i was with you we were in one that took an hour yeah that's right yeah an hour it was an hour to get through the gate because of their high-tech the easy system that saves time Save time. It saves saves them money. I think. You don't have to have a clerk enter all the information. Make the driver do it for you. I'm a I'm a IT clerk now. Look. With all that button pushing, I'm all confused. I don't know how to park a truck anymore. Go. Oh, Kevin's in a Kevin's in a great mood uh, this morning. I'll make you do your job for you. <laughs> oh, Kevin! I would say, do you need a coffee? But you don't drink coffee. <laughs> you see where all the trucks were parked in front of the gate? Yes, there? I did see all those we, trucks. We could have spent the night. Ah. Okay. Now, where are we going with this load? Oh, and their computer kept saying I was with Schneider and there was no way for me to change it. <laughs> so I don't know if this load was picked up for Schneider, like we subcontracted through them, or their computer just doesn't know the difference between Crete and Schneider. That's funny. Nothing I knew about that. That is very funny. Yeah. The computer's not too great. A lot of Schneider, Schneider trailers nice. right there. That's, that's uh, good for Schneider. part about mayor so Forbes magazine 2021 said it was number 13 for America's privately held companies in terms of size and based on 2020 revenue the 21st largest retail store in America pretty impressive now fully stocked with kitty litter. And we are getting an empty right across the way. That's good news. Yeah, better check. Maybe there's kitty litter in it. Okay, false alarm. That was not an empty. Darn it. 
This is the row where the empties are supposed to be? Yep. <laughs> Along the back here. Along the back. Hmm. Oh, maybe she really wants you to take a Schneider. Now, those doors are not open. Okay. Alright. Let's see what we can do. These look pretty. You like peppers? Maybe we could take one of these. The bell peppers. trailer but it's attached to a tractor <laughs>
trailer. Could we try that? <laughs> Probably still loaded as well. Instructions were specific for the other location. We brought the kitty litter over there because it was specified. Yeah, that was the address for our delivery. Yeah. Interesting. This is huge. Now we understand why Forbes magazine in 2021 said this was the 13th largest private retailer. No privately held company in the United States. I'd, we had never heard of it before. And now we're in a lineup, wasting our time. Very sad. <laughs> but like an empty so we can go to our next load, which we do have lined up. driver's license so they have your personal information in their computer then they want your cell phone number because they're going to send you text messages telling you you know where to where to drop or where to dock your trailer or whatever and then you have to put in special code numbers and all kinds of stuff so basically you're entering all the information in their computer that they're not going to pay a clerk to do and then you still got to talk to the woman at the window and she's got to tell you stuff and then we finally go and drop our trailer and there's no empties. So now we're on a wild hunt for an empty at a big complex. I don't know where to go now. She said to go. She said go left yeah. and there's a big hill or something. And if they're not there, go over that way by the railroad tracks. She also I'm said hoping this guy gives us a map and maybe a couple of clues. Yeah. I see a lot of lots here. I'm looking for empty creek trailers. Up this way? Yeah. And for all their high technology and it's such a huge place and there's all these guard shacks and all this stuff, they don't know where the empty trailers are. Just go look. This place is like three square miles big. Just go look. We're gonna be here all day. Huge 
huge sign that says receiving. Oh. All right, on the trailer hunt. There's a hill. So go past the hill. Go past the hill. Left or right? Can you put your window up, please? Road splits. aren't open but maybe they're just closed because we're in Michigan. No? Oh no, the bad mood gets worse. <laughs> are open on any of these. So do they close them or are these all loaded? Here's well, another thing. If they crate. had a lot where the empty trailers are all put, somebody would have told us, right? So that means the empty trailers are all mixed, mixed in. Mixed in. Hmm. All right, that one was also not an empty. Really inconsiderate. Yeah, yeah. They can keep track of what's on their shelves, so it's probably not so hard to keep track of a big trailer somewhere. <laughs> Logistics. Hmm. Oi, oi, oi. Oh, there's the railroad tracks. She was talking about the railroad tracks. That's the other way. Find any empty trailers in this three miles of lot and go all the way back and go over and see where that truck went. There's another lot over there.
is another crate. But this uh, lane is very narrow. Oh boy, that, that, that's not gonna be easy. Luckily, the spot next to it is empty, so maybe he can angle himself. Oh, oh, I hear squeaking of doors. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, that's a good sign. I have found the one and only. That sounded promising. Is it empty? Nope, there's no seal on it, but it's loaded. Oh. That's very bad. <laughs> oh, that is bad. They can project the load. Hmm. What's in it? Maybe we could just set it next to the warehouse here. A bunch of boxes. It smelled good. It smelled good. Oh. Oi! Hello, brakes. be doing at 6 a.m. <laughs> I'm getting paid for this. 
Nope, not getting paid for this. Very frustrating. Artichokes, blueberries, bananas, cherries. I saw a cabbage go by earlier. That's funny. Lots of peppers, raspberries, cherries, apples. I thought it was a cabbage, maybe it was an artichoke. Any other cabbage trailers? Hmm. Look, team members going to work. Good morning. All right, we're going to check out the other side. Getting a good tour, that's for sure. Mechanic based on there? Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah, they're gonna have a fleet of trucks. Yeah, their own mechanics. Just heard the doors again. So that is a hopeful, hopeful sign. Here comes Kevin, let's see. No, that does not look like a happy dance. Is that a no? Empty? You didn't do a happy dance? Gosh, honey, that's great news. Let's proclaim it across the land. We have found an empty. Oh, wow. <laughs> A rare specimen these days. Hello, Empty Creek Trailer, so exciting.
message? Yeah, it says send in a detention form. Because we have been here basically an hour and a half. Mm. Ah. I hooked up to this trailer, now I'm gonna do a quick inspection on it. Lights, brakes, tires. Yeah, see if it needs a T1. Whoa! Blinded by the light. Wake up! It feels like it's still the middle of the night. Blinded by the light. We got a trailer. It's our biggest delight. Yeah? This trailer was inspected August 21st. <gasps> Woo! taking this trailer all the way to Oklahoma City. So that's good. That's yeah, good no T1, that's great. Everything inspected recently, that's good news. Do you think it was worth waiting for this one, honey? No. Now, if you'd be so kind to tell us what you're doing when you're doing it, that'd be awesome. Now, I have a mess uh, form to fill out here. It says, empty call. So what you do is put in the information showing that you've delivered the load. Bill of lading number, 11150. 74616 and the weight of the load 44525 and how many pieces were in the load looks like 25 the seal number 0768 so you don't do this until you pick up your empty here Seven six eight six four seven three. Yeah, because part of this form is you're empty. Four two seven nine nine one is the odometer. Mm, it's suddenly so quiet. current trailer. So now you're now you're saying okay, this is the trailer that we're, we picked up. Uh -huh. Two. Three, three, double, oh, one. Because if you don't have it, then they will say, hey, don't you have a trailer? See, that's the last, the last line you fill out is what trailer you have now. So if I left that blank, I'd immediately get another message saying, hey, don't you have a trailer? What's your trailer number? Where, where's the trailer? Don't you have an empty trailer? <laughs> Everybody should have an empty trailer. And then you'll say, I'm bobtailing home or no empty trailers available. And now that I've sent this message, they will send me the information for my next load. See, when you get when you do the pre-plan, they send you a pre-plan. It has the addresses and stuff like that. But you don't have all the information. So now I'll get the rest of the information for our next load, like the uh, bill of lading, the any reference numbers you have to give when you arrive. Um, the actual mileage, because sometimes the deadhead isn't isn't accurate. It's based on where you are and not where you're dropping. Or whatever. See, you have a new message. And so, congratulations on finding an empty trailer. Well, usually, while I wait for that message, I finish up this paper. We are so impressed with your perseverance. So what you do is. Mm -hmm. Submit your paperwork so you will get paid. That's a good idea. I like to do that. Yeah. I like to get paid. Yeah, getting paid is, is a nice part so of the job. You have to scan those two pages your trip report and your bill of lading. Mm hmm. Do you have anything else like maybe receipts or 
other stuff, you can scan it because it applies to that trip, right? Yeah. So for that, you take your telephone. You do company business on your personal device. Mm, there's that pet peeve. Yeah. Well, it's either that or go to a truck stop and try to find a machine that will scan this stuff and everything. But you should be paying my cell phone bill if I have to use my phone to do your business. Yeah, you used to have a business cell phone when you worked for Canadian Web. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Scan the first one, looks good. Next, I didn't forget to put anything on there. So I filled in all the little dots and scan the next one. This is the bill of lading. Make sure it's signed. But not really. They didn't sign it. Hmm? But that's your proof that you delivered it. It's that signature. Uh, so what do you do now? Well, nothing I can't do. They don't sign it. They don't even take their copies because it's all electronic. Oh, with so, the kiosk. Yeah. So you don't get a signature. You don't get a signature, even though she took the time to write that number on the top, because you need that number to enter it into the kiosk. <laughs> so obviously, somebody did something there. Hmm. Strange. You always got to have a signature. So I'll just say it's an electronic signature. And now, you put in the, the trip number. Six seven nine eight three, three, and then the tractor number. So I get paid. And send it. And away it goes. Let's go. These papers here. Stash them inside the clipboard. I like to save all the paper in the world. <laughs> And then someday, have a big bonfire like we did when we left St. Croix. <laughs> the rest of the customer's paper that they're leaving me with. Uh-huh. And now... Did you just put that in your filing system? Yeah. And now I have nine messages. What? You are... Whoops. You are dispatched on a Walmart load. Don't be late. Don't be early. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. Could we conclude this one before we start the next one? What do you want? So, um, can you still tell us about this detention message that you got? And then let's finish this video. I like to see you dance. You didn't do the happy dance for when me, but I, uh, you could do the YouTube dance. We, we got here at, uh, oh, I hear a train. 5.39 and 5.40, say. And after an hour, if you have not sent in your empty calls saying you've delivered the load and you're ready to go again, they automatically send you a message saying, hey, don't forget to send a detention form. There's a message on here that you send saying, oh, I've been here a long time. I'm going to get detention pay. But you don't get the detention pay until after two hours. So after one hour, they say, hey, don't forget the old detention business, but you can't, you can't really send it. If, uh, like if it's a live load and you are on time for your appointment and they have not started unloading you after 45 minutes, you can send that form. So it's kind of like a heads up to the company saying, hey, uh, I'm, I'm here for my appointment, but they're not unloading me. And then if you've been there two hours, and you're still not gone, you send the message and you have a form, a paper form that you fill out and get the customer to sign it and you sign it. And when you scan all your bills and stuff, you scan that too. And then the company, Crete, can go after the customer for keeping you waiting so long. So the message I got was just after one hour saying, hey, let's not forget that detention thing, but it doesn't apply here. And we, it is now, 10 to 7, so we've been here like an hour and 15, uh -huh. not quite an hour and a half yet, mm -hmm. but I still have to do my stuff for the next right. lane. And then we have to drive 10 miles to get to the exit. 
Now we <laughs> gotta find our way out huge. of here now. <laughs> and then we have to go get our next load. I think then we have to go get a coffee. I think we should go get you a coffee. Yeah, I've been very else. patient you, you this were morning. Very good. You were up. I didn't have to wake you up. You got up. You were ready to go way on time before oh. me. Oh. You were you were really gung ho today. Oh. Honey, Thanks. So you get a coffee. <laughs> I get a coffee as a treat. Well, I really right. appreciate the kudos and kudos Give to Tanya you. Give Tanya a thumbs up. Oh. <laughs> Let's point down here and say comments and hit the subscribe button <laughs> i'm getting back to work yeah comments and questions um this was a very interesting experience i'm glad we were able to share that with you because this is one of the frustrations for drivers is trying to find those empties and it's really annoying when you see a trailer for your company and it's still loaded that that uh, is yeah annoying when you are in search of the elusive empty anyway Thank you so much for joining us today. As Kevin said, please do give it a thumbs up. Come on, honey. Come on. Oh, he's working. Darn. All right, give it a thumbs up. Put your comments and questions below. What is the longest you have looked for a trailer at a distribution center? We'd be interested to know. And we appreciate you coming along with us. If you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, please do so. We'd really appreciate that. And you can hit that notification bell if you want to know when we upload new videos. And with that, we wish you a great day with love from Kevin. Bye-bye. And Tanya. Bye. Ten messages. <laughs>